This is the Pagani Design Commander, which is a homage to the No Time To Die Omega Seamaster. Incredibly, this is a homage to a watch featured in a film which hasn't even been released yet because it's been delayed twice, meaning it's not going to be released until the beginning of next year. Now, is this a cheap movie cash-in from Pagani? Just trying to cash in on the hype around No Time To Die and the incredibly popular release that Omega have had? Or is this a genuine quality watch which anyone would be proud to add to their collection so is this the Bugani that everyone knows and loves value driven spec monsters but with qc issues which need to be fixed or is this a new start for Pagani, where they're still offering great value but with very few qc issues is this watch built for bond we'll be exploring all of that in today's video let's get into it so as i covered in the intro this is the Pagani design commander which is a seamaster homage now, as you can see here, it is, as I touched upon, the No Time To Die variant, meaning that it's got this beautiful gilt look to it, this aged sort of look. Now, first things first, we're just going to go through the specs because that's what a lot of you guys will be interested in. In terms of the case size, we've got a 42mm case, 49mm look to look, thickness of about 14mm, which includes this lovely box crystal, which is sapphire. And you've got 20 millimeter lug width so on paper that is quite a decent sized watch however the 20 millimeter lug width really helps to pull it back in and make it very very wearable now i also touched upon the crystal it is a sapphire and it's a boxed sapphire crystal which at this price point which i'll mention the price a bit later is absolutely unbelievable it has to be said it's very nicely done i think there is ar on there as it does really well in sunlight i wouldn't be able to say specifically what that is but it is very good and it's a lovely piece of crystal and it is definitely sapphire in terms of the bezel it's a 90 click bezel with a ceramic insert nice action to it tiny bit of black play not really much though beautiful beautiful insert with a loom pip at the 12 Loom pip lines up nicely. Get to that a bit later. That's one of my niggles. <laughs> um, screw down crown with the Bugani logo. Got crown guards on there as well. And screws really nicely. NH35. Hacks hand winds. Hand winding is nice. Sometimes it does feel a little bit gritty, which makes me wonder if it's a slightly lower grade NH35 in here, maybe a uh, sort of a second, so one that wasn't quite finished the high quality that Seiko um, sells, so maybe they got them a bit cheaper. No idea, but it's running very, very accurately. Um, it's coming in at about uh, five seconds a day at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic. In terms of the finishing, you've got brushed, which transitions to high polished. It's very, very slight beveled edge. Nothing too crazy, but it is nice finishing considering the price. Very nice indeed. In terms of that bezel as well, it is scalloped. I've seen quite a few people complain about this, uh, saying it's hard to grip, but to be honest, I think it's very easy. You know, if you were to compare it to a uh, sort of coin edge bezel, so for example, I've got my Islander here. You know, obviously this is going to be easier to grab than a scalloped bezel but the benefit of this is I think it just looks a lot more elegant I think it looks more refined and I think it helps this piece to be a bit dressier and more of a sort of everyday piece that you could wear with everything as opposed to a bezel like this which I think is a bit more tool like moving on to the back of the case you have got a display exhibition back with the NH35 in there so let me give that a quick quick clean so you can see that a bit better so yeah as I said NH35 which is the Seiko movement hacks hand winds very reliable movement and you know from Bugani it's what you expect 
you know this is what they use in a lot of their watches uh, they tend to go chinese movements in terms of gmt's but generally speaking if it's a automatic three-hander watch they'll tend to use an h35 and you know what you can't argue with that at all easy to service easy to replace parts or to replace the unit full stop when needed reliable robust yep can't argue with that at all on the back you've also got a bit of a spec sheet regarding the design stainless steel this watch is fully stainless steel 100 meters so that screw down crown helps with that so not a 200 meter water uh, diver or diver style watch I should say 100 meters however it's got a screw down crown so I would feel pretty comfortable going diving with this um, you may have noticed the strap this is not the stock strap this is a Milanese strap which I got off AliExpress literally cost me a few pounds but I think it suits this vintage style so so well um, the actual Omega release um, is on a strap like this as well so I think it was pretty cool to get mine on this as well as I think it just looks incredibly elegant um, I have actually got a few pictures of this on the stock strap and also on a bond strap um, the bond strap is the one in the thumbnail so I will uh, pop those up for you now to have a look black dial 42 millimeter 20 millimeter lug as you can imagine incredibly versatile you know you can really dress this up make this casual you know wearing it with a mesh bracelet does make it look a bit more uh, sporty but also um, you know quite refined quite elegant you know the bond strap really brings out um, that sort of vintage aesthetic and then the uh, strap that it comes with the rubber strap um, it's a decent quality strap nylon rubber on the inside um, I just wasn't a big fan of the deploying clasp I felt it was a bit tight on the strap and actually um, ripped up some of the stitching so I'm not actually wearing it on that strap although I think it's a perfectly good strap um, when this watch was first released there were problems with the bracelet and the um, link sort of adjusting out slightly with poor finishing um, and making the uh, size on the wrist a bit too large were pretty commonplace um, apparently they fixed these issues however I ordered the strap um, the rubber strap just because it was a little bit cheaper and also I just wanted to avoid any of those QC issues uh, so that's it on those uh, straps so if we have a look at the actual dial um, I'll pop in some macro footage as well but uh, if we have a quick look um, if you're familiar with the Seamaster you'll be pretty familiar with this a few little changes though because um, whilst it is a homage it's not an exact one-to-one -one clone it's not far off but um, yeah there are a few differences so as I said ceramic insert uh, with uh, dot markings for every minute you've got lines at the uh, five minute increments and you've got actual uh, numbers at the uh, 10 minutes increments so it's an hour uh, timing bezel as said 90 clicks so it's not the most accurate for timing but um, you know realistically I've used this to time a few things and it's been absolutely fine uh, in terms of the indices on dial they are applied which is great and they're filled with loom um, so you've got a double baton at the 12, single baton at the 6, and a single baton at the 9. And then you've got circular indices everywhere else except for the 3 o'clock, which does have a white date window, which isn't framed. But because of the vintage look to the watch and the yellowed loom, um, I don't think it stands out that much. I think it's actually done quite nicely. Garnet design, printed at the 12. Not applied, but I think it you know it looks pretty smart. Um, not a bad name really. You know, one of the better Chinese uh, watch companies in terms of their name and logo. I think. Let's just move these hands so we can have a look at that text. So it says automatic. As we discussed, an H thirty five. Water resistant because it is 10 bar which is 100 meters Japanese movement printed at 12 again NH35 in terms of the actual dial as you can see it is a textured matte black finish which is very nice you know that bit of texture really adds some interest to the dial again the macro footage will show that a bit better uh, in terms of the hands 
they're not actually the same as the Seamaster hands, which I think is quite interesting. Um, the other Chinese homages that I've seen do have the exact same hands, um, those sort of um, skeletonized hands, um, whereas these are a bit different, which, you know, if you want the No Time To Die watch but can't either afford it, want to spend that money on it, um, you know, and you want a one-to-one, -one, you know, there are other brands, uh, Felida, um have released one which is basically a one-to-one, -one, but this is a little bit different. I actually quite like that because, you know, whilst it is a homage, um, you know, it has got a little bit of its own personality because of those different hands. Um, one of the difference as well is the lack of a helium escape valve, which I actually prefer. For me, I don't mind it on the C Master because it's got a functional use because it's actually built to work. But on a watch where it's just there for decoration, um, and to be fair, it's a homage, so you can completely understand it. Um, but when it's not there for function and it's just there for looks, I prefer it just to not be there full stop, which is why I particularly like this one. Um, and also in terms of uh, the second hand, on the actual Omega release and most of the homages, it does have a red tip. This one does not. And on the, um, again, on the Omega, the text is different on dial. Whereas I've seen some homages have the exact same text, which again, doesn't accurately represent what that watch is. So I prefer this to have a little bit of a tweak. So whilst it's still an obvious homage, you know, it's a bit truer to the actual spec of the watch, which I actually really appreciate. You may notice you've almost got three distinct colors going on. The Pagani design and the text is one color. The hand and loom are another and the bezel the engraved and filled writing, which is very nicely done, is another. So you've got this aged loom, and this aged look, in three different colours, which I'll be honest, I would prefer if it was a consistent colour, or at least consistent from the hands to the bezel, with the design, design and the writing being a different colour to make that pop. Um, that's a very minor niggle, um, but I would have preferred that to have been consistent throughout. Um, but to be honest, it's a pretty minor niggle. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm sort of really struggling for things to moan about. Um, this watch I got on the 11.11 sale. I paid just over £70 for it delivered to my door. Unbelievable. Really unbelievable for the set of specs. You've got Sapphire, Seiko Movement, Stainless Steel, 100 meter with a screw down crown. Beautiful design, obviously it's a homage, but still, regardless, it's a beautiful design and it's really beautifully executed. A good rubber strap, it is a good strap, but I just prefer it on this, for less than £100. If you go Seiko, to get Sapphire, you're looking at the King Samurai or the King Turtle, which is a different price category altogether. Orient, you're looking at the Kamasu, but then you've got a aluminium bezel. Obviously, some people prefer aluminium, I quite like ceramic. Um, and then even the other micro brands, you're looking at well more than £100. So it's just unbelievable value. And this is actually, you know, a more expensive Pagani. Their Rolexes, um, their homages tend to be around about the 50 or £60 mark. I saw them for about £45 during that 11.11 sale. Now, this is supposedly a better quality finish than those watches. And I'll be honest, I've never had any experiences with those. I'd love to at some point. Um, but I can only talk about experiences with this watch and it's got to be said I've got um, you know some micro brands which are more expensive like my Phoebus Wavemaster and I'll be honest this feels just as tactile you know just as well built um, yeah just absolutely fantastic um, really my only niggle with this and at this price point I can absolutely accept it is the 12 o'clock, slightly misaligned, I'll put in the macro again so you can see that a bit better but to be honest, you know, it's annoying, I wish it wasn't there but at this price point, I fully accept that there will be QC issues because you cannot make this watch and give it great QC, I'll be completely honest, for this price, you know, would I rather pay £100 and have it, you know, better QC? Yeah, I would but to be honest, this is the choice Pagani have made and I knew that there probably would be little niggles with it, but I'm delighted with it. And even that isn't enough to 
frustrate me at all. Um, only other little niggle is that the winding does feel a bit gritty at times, but to be honest, you get that with some Swiss movements, and it's been accurate. It's wound absolutely fine. The power reserve's been absolutely fine. Um, I won't go too much into the movement because you know the NH thirty five has been covered to death. And it's been covered on my channel quite a bit. Um, if you want to see my initial thoughts when I open this watch, go back on my channel. Um, my unboxing video. It was only a few videos ago, so I'll share some more of my initial thoughts there. Um, I'll give you a wrist shot, just so you can see it on video as well. As you can see, it fits my wrist nicely. 49mm, lug to lug, is about what I can pull off. Any bigger is a bit large, but yeah, absolutely fantastic, fantastic look. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Now the only thing I haven't mentioned is the loom. And I'll actually put on screen what loom they use uh, because I can't exactly remember what it was. Um, it's okay. You know, it shines brightly for the first 10 minutes. I'll actually put on a um, loom shop video which is fast forwarded but it shows 10 minutes. And as you see by about the 10 minute mark, it's probably lost about half of its loom. Um, it's okay. Again, you've got to save costs somewhere. And realistically, yeah, if, if you're going diving with something, you're going to want it ISO certified anyway, so you're going to be looking at a different watch to this. Um, and for daily use, it's bright enough, so I'm not going to slace it for that. I've seen some people moan about it, which, you know, it's a, it's a fair thing to critique because it is one of the weaker parts of the watch, but realistically, I'm not going to moan about a watch at £70 with these specs if the loom isn't as good as my Seiko or my Phoebus or my Islander because those watches cost a lot more. And this is better than those watches in some areas, so yeah, absolutely can't can't complain. So it brings me to a bit of a conclusion on this watch. Is this watch fit for 007? Is this a fair tribute to both Omega with their design and also James Bond? And I think it is. I think it's affordable, luxurious in look, high quality in terms of build. And robust. I think James Bond, whilst he's someone who appreciates the name, he's also just looking for a tool that gets the job done. I think this Pagani design in particular is a good example of that. There's no gimmicks, there's no hidden escape app that doesn't work like on some of the other homages. The text is true to the dial, it's upfront about what it is, and it gets the job done. So I think it absolutely does. Now, in terms of your average collector, where does this fit in? I think if you're looking for a black dial diver, you know, this is the first black dial diver I've ever owned that doesn't have like a pop of colour, like an orange on it or something, obviously it's still got the age loom, so it's a bit more um, out there than just a subdued dial, but this is still so versatile, and this would make an absolutely fantastic everyday piece, and I personally can't wait to go and see No Time To Die in the new year, and believe me, I will be proudly wearing my Pagani design on my wrist and when that Seamaster comes on the screen I'll look down at this and whilst it's not quite the Omega it scratches that itch and wow it is a stunning stunning watch thank you for watching please feel free to like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one